Devin Becker, Becker Safety and Supply. Becker Safety and Supply out of Colorado. Which part of Colorado are you out of? So we're based out of Greeley, Colorado. So it's about an hour north of Denver. Nice. I used to do a magazine in Greeley. I'm somewhat familiar with that area. First stockyard I ever saw. I used to drive through Sioux City, Iowa. There's where vacant uh, first stockyard i ever saw with cattle was greeley wow that was quite a sight never forget it so anyway good times moving on we can't stay in the past man let's talk a little safety you've got an event coming up here uh talk to me about your event give me the details if you wouldn't sir yeah thanks for asking so we're uh, hosting a 2019 safety expo uh that's september 20th uh this is the fourth year that we've actually hosted it uh, it's uh, something that Becker Safety and Supply puts on. Um, it's an event that we get all of our vendors rounded up and uh, get them to our location and, and invite all of our awesome customers to to, to see what we got to offer. Uh, we have this year over 50 vendors that are coming. Uh, one of them is the DuPont Thermo Man. So we're super excited about that. We've been trying about three years to get them to come. Um, so that's where they actually do the live burn of on a mountain and um, do like the flash burn and uh, everyone gets to learn about why it's important to wear FR and how to how to properly launder it so you don't uh, catch on fire on the job site. So um, our whole goal with that is the big event is just to provide value to the customers. Um, in the past, we've done uh, CPR class you know, free of charge, things like that. But this year, uh, we got a DOT inspection training uh, hosted by uh, John LA dealership and uh, the Colorado Safety Association. Um, yeah, DuPont Thermo Man, we got confined space training uh, put, by, put on by uh, Drader, uh, True Safety, uh, Fall Tech. So we're super excited about uh, that as well. So our whole goal is, we're, you know, we're going to feed you. We're going to have... Uh, free breakfast um, catered by uh, hurricane sw air swabbing so they actually just will just uh, have this oil rig hooked up and uh, and they actually have a like a grill on it so they're going to be taking breakfast burritos and scooters will be there for coffee and all the pastries and all that good stuff and uh, lunch is going to be provided by uh, Lapco so we're going to feed you breakfast and lunch and then we're going to have some awesome prizes at the end but really our goal with this event is just to get people uh, around, uh, show them like the, the latest and greatest in workplace safety, um, and just really kind of educate them and provide great value. So uh, $10 of every ticket that is sold actually goes to a nonprofit called Heroes Expedition. So we always wanted to give back. Um, this event isn't uh, you know, about Vector. It's about uh, you know, the safety on the industry and all that good stuff. So. Safety Expo, September 20th, 2019, Becker Safety and Supply. I did want to ask you, as you were talking about this, the, the thing that I'm really kind of curious about is your opinion on this. I don't know how long you've been involved in the safety business, but really when, when you look at the evolution of safety, it starts with good intention to basically regulation. And we've got a lot of regulations that have happened over the last 10, 15 years, basically because of the advent of technology. You know, as, as we've gotten more innovative with things, we've learned how to make, you know, especially in the oil and gas. I mean, you look at the reclamation programs over the last 20 years, it's incredible the amount of innovations that have gone into the ecosystem and making, I mean, I, we, 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 I kind of joke that, a lot of times it seems like the oil and gas industries are like Boy Scouts where they leave the place looking better than when they got there. And I kind of joked about that. Then I started seeing it firsthand. Um, do you know what I mean when we t talk about safety where I take a look at your expo and I could see where initially that started out to be a good way for you as somebody to network with your vendors, etc. But I could see now where boy, this could probably be opened up to the public to where they would come and learn quite a bit because safety has evolved so much in the last 10 to 15 to 20 years because of technology, innovation, and regulation. Do you know what I'm saying by that, or am I just talking crazy? Oh, no, you're, uh, you're right on. So we've been in business 20 years, and obviously I haven't been 
uh, part of the business that long. Obviously, uh, this is a family business, but uh, Randy, who started it 20 years ago, uh, started out as a roustabout when he was 16, and their their term of safety was, you know, you have a bandana on, you take off your shirt, you uh, you have shorts and tennis shoes, and when you go clean the tank, you know, if you're feeling lightheaded, then come out. So that was kind of the extent of uh, safety back back in the day. But uh, fast forward to you know where we're at today, you know we I, I've seen it even in the last three years since been, being on the, the business full time. Um, my background is public safety. I used to be a full time firefighter, and so coming on the business full time three years ago, I've seen a dramatic um, increase in safety and importance on safety. Uh, it seemed like before, if there was any hardship or anything like that with a company safety would be the first to go but you don't see that happen now especially with colorado and how uh how much of a microscope everyone has on oil and gas industry um, safety is definitely paramount and you know one example of that is we uh we represent uh, a vendor called blackline safety um, so they're they're the like um, leader in connected workers on the gas detectors so like you know three years ago um, you know, it was just a standard gas monitor. Now, these monitors have GPS, satellites, um, cell phone connectivity, uh, latch alarms. You know, you can fall detection. So, like, just in that of technology and uh, wearables and things of that nature, it's really, really done to the uh, technology side of things. Well, you're mentioned about bandanas to FR clothing right there. That speaks volumes. I mean, when you think about it, that that was the leading science at the time. You know, there was that's the one thing that's lost in this, I think, is there's a lot of regulations that have been placed on oil and gas over the last 20 years. But a lot of that innovation has been led by the industry in terms of we talked a little bit off the air about how, you know, the industry self polices itself. It also takes care of its employees by being intuitive and innovative as well. Do you do you see that from your perspective as a someone in safety and in the past with emergency services? Yeah, I do. I mean, it's like I said, the safety is so on top of everyone's minds now. You know, there's there's been accidents, there's been fatalities, there's been things like that that people have learned from. Um, you know, to make sure that it doesn't happen again. And so with, you know, being such a microscope of, uh, in Colorado, um, you don't want bad press, you know, as, as, uh, if something happens, that's, they're going to spin that, uh, that report to make it look like it's oil and gas is evil. So, um, you know, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta be safe out there. You gotta remember, um, why you're out there. Um, our big thing, our mission is to provide, you know, innovative and high quality products so you can get home safe to your family. And so um, I think that's that's something that people are finally realizing is, you know, I go to work and I want to come home at the end of the day. And with the technology of all these, um, you know, emissions, control devices and all those kind of things too that, you know, help with oil and gas, you know, that worker safety is, is number one. So we want these guys to be as healthy as they are uh, when they start the job and when they leave the job. You're based out of Greeley, uh, a lot of oil and gas activity in the county. Uh, you are in safety. I heard the word roust about, so I assume there's uh, an oil and gas connection with your business. Uh, Colorado, you've mentioned a few times the atmosphere there. Uh, what are your observations, your thoughts, and just your overall perspectives when it comes to the climate and environment of oil and gas in the state of Colorado? It's, uh, it's been a pretty crazy ride um, the last couple of years. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure most of it, everyone's familiar with Prop 112 last year of that 2,500-foot uh, setback. Um, really, that kind of woke up the industry, I feel like, of we need to educate people about what we do. Um, in the industry of not only safety but in oil and gas, um, of how many people you know are involved in the industry, and for the longest time, we've been on the defense um, and trying to defend our jobs. 
but we're trying to change that through the, the group uh, and company Energy Strong that helped start. Um, you know, we want to be pro- you know, proactive and um, be out there in, in the industry and educating people about uh, what we do and what, uh, you know, why it's so important uh, of the jobs that we do. And so um, it's been pretty crazy, you know, with, um, you know, SB 181 after after the election, you know, that was enacted to uh, provide local control. And so being in Weld County, uh, Weld County is like the number one producer of oil and gas in Colorado. Um, so, you know, we, we want to make sure that stays here. Uh, make sure that uh, the permits and all that good stuff goes through. And so, you know, through Energy Strong, we're trying to build a network of people um, that will speak at these events. And and it's really, really interesting how, you know, we're going to these rallies and, you know, things of that nature during election time. Like, I never thought I'd ever have to do that. But, uh, you know, you, you know, you gotta, you gotta speak for, up for what you believe in. And so, um, this is one of the things that we want people to be proud of what they do. We want, want them to be, um, you know, we want people to get away from that oil filled trash mentality. Um, we're, we're professionals. Everyone's highly educated, highly trained, highly skilled. And so what they do matters and uh, people need to realize that. How much of it is, is safety, I guess, you know, I, I look at it from your perspective and I could see where you could really add quite a bit to, you know, that that conversation. Yeah, I mean, safety, obviously, when, um, you know, when all these things are passed, that's that's the number one thing that they, they harp on is we want it to be safe, we want it to be safe. And we totally agree with that. Like, we want people to be you know, to come home at night. And so um, that was, that's one of the things that the, the opponents of oil and gas, you know, try to try to get on the bandwagon with of, of how unsafe it is and how dangerous it is and things of that nature. So we want to educate people of that the processes and the um, equipment that the oil and gas is invested in to make things safer, to make things automated, to make things um, you know, a little more um, streamlined so that way, um, you know, these incidents don't happen. And they obviously use like, the Firestone incident as an example of, you know, how dangerous it is. And, um, but that's, that's not all the facts. You know, you gotta, you gotta realize where the industry has come and, uh, and where it's going on technology and, and through the safety side of things, not only on the worker, but on the facilities and um, things that they, they put in place. They spend millions and millions of dollars to make sure things are safe and the workers are safe. So I think it's just education for the, the public to realize how safe the industry is when you compare it to other major industries in Colorado. One of the interesting things about oil and gas and the different parts of the environment and different parts of safety, et cetera, that I find is uh, last week we had on a gentleman, uh, Keegan Blake, and he's got a pipeline silencer, and that helps with the safety of you know your ears and just the whole working environment, et cetera. Well, that kind of sidebarred into noise pollution, you know. And I've had interviews with people from observatories to talk about how they're working with the oil and gas industry on light pollution, you know. And so there's these little slivers that people don't really talk about, and safety is one of those that can be brought to the, 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 the forefront, you know, when you're talking about some air quality type issues and you're talking about some, you know, some noise levels and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, how, how in depth is your expo or how in depth is your expertise in terms of, you know, it sounds like you're following this energy strong movement. I don't know how involved you are on the participation, but it sounds like you, you, you show up to an event or two type of a thing. But talk to me a little bit about how broad safety can get in today's world. Like I said, you know, in pollution, man, we, we stemmed into a couple other different areas. So is, is, is safety just the FR clothing or does it stem into other areas? Yeah, I mean, for our business, we really try to specialize and, and focus on uh, the PPE side of the safety um, area, 
obviously the uh, environmental and the missions and all that kind of stuff that all matters but like for what our business does it's more on the the worker side of things and so that's that's the things that we'd really try to highlight during our safety expo um you know people don't realize they they gripe and they're like i don't get why i have to spend so much money on fr clothing i don't get why i have to you know wash it specially outside of my normal clothes like people don't realize um you know the equipment that's been given them you know why do i have to wear a gas monitor why do i have to wear a hard hat you know these things that where the industry has mandated um whether it's through you know responding to incidents you know after an incident that's when things are enacted or kind of a prevention kind of thing but people don't realize why they they do they have to wear the stuff that they have to wear um but what our safety expo is designed for is to really get everyone to the event and really just enlighten them about um you know what's new in in the workplace for PPE and safety equipment but also to reinforce why their companies spend you know millions and millions of dollars on these PPE um you know policies and procedures uh, i mean it's all designed to keep them safe and so um that's the cool thing about this thermoman uh, demo that we are having at our expo um you know, it actually burns the, the gear and, and actually shows a graph on a TV of, like, second-degree burns, third-degree burns, and then they also compare it to, like, an Under Armour material. You know, it's um, where it looks like shrink wraps a person if they're involved in a in a, fi- a flash fire. And so I think, I think it's people are told, you know, you need to be safe, but it's honestly the why behind it of why they need to stay safe and, why they need to do the things that they do um, is so they can get home safe. And so uh, we try to provide value through the expo of providing those hands-on opportunities for people to see that in action, whether it's um, fall protection. You know, why do I have to wear fall protection? Well, if you fall, you know, you want to make sure you're not hitting the ground. Um, so, you know, this is those things that um, you know, we try to reinforce and um, definitely have a, have a fun time with it and also feed you so (laughs) if you have food they will come that's generally the way it works you know and if you have drinks they'll really show up early for that holy smokes (laughs) i tell you uh that's you know listening to what you're talking about it just reminds me of all the different engineers and all the different scientists and all the different safety and different you know all the different things that go into it and you know and, and you represent just a small slice of the whole oil and gas industry but man, I mean, doesn't that employ a lot of not only white collar jobs but blue collar jobs? And I mean, when you really think about it, you know, gas monitors and FR clothing and all those different innovative safety items that you have just in your shop. And like you said, this is, you guys just are focusing on the PP side of things. Do you ever sit and take a step back and, and look at that energy economy there? Yeah, I mean, when when the whole Prop One Twelve thing happened last year. You know, there's stats that came out of, you know, how many people are in the industry specifically. And it's a pretty big number. But when you talk about the jobs that are created from the oil and gas industry that are, like, supporting kind of jobs, you know, the restaurants, the gas stations, you know, the uh, FR stores like ours, um, you know, things of that nature, it's it's crazy how, how far-reaching it is. You know, you can you can see how how far it goes, you know, just by driving down the street and seeing, you know, a, a oil-filled truck or, you know, parked at a, a restaurant or at a gas station, things of that nature. It's, it's amazing to see. And then all the schools that benefit from it, too. Like, people don't realize the oil and gas industry provides so much value, not to only the workers, but also to the community. And so I think that's, what people need to realize is oil and gas isn't evil. It's it's providing jobs for us. It's providing a great economy. It's providing you know thing, you know public safety. You know in our area has really improved just because um, you know the tax revenue uh, for oil and gas. You know they're able to buy new apparatus. They're able to you know staff the the stations with more personnel. And so you know the 
those are things that that matter. Well, I tell you, the crude life has certainly gotten behind the uh, thesis that the oil and gas industry has become the only place left where you know capitalism and opportunity exists anymore. Um, it just seems like they're the only ones still offering opportunity. Everybody else has got to go through uh, so, so many hoops and, and ladders to get things done, whereas in the oil and gas industry, some roustabout can figure out a new vibrating tube and then the next week have a pretty good contract <laughs> with Marathon. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, our, our company is specifically, you know, Randy being roustabout, you know, and then the sales and then, you know, he originally started selling gloves out of the back seat of his Mercury Topaz 20 years ago to where we're at today of, you know, full PPE, head-to-toe safety for for many different industries, more than oil and gas as well. But, like, it's amazing to see, you know, with a little bit of grit, a little bit of hard work, you know, that things are things are possible. All right, one more time. Give me the details for your safety expo coming up in Greeley, Colorado. Awesome. So to register uh, for the Safety Expo, which is on September 20th, 2019, uh, go to com slash events uh, or call us at 970-576-3988. Be happy to get you a, a ticket. We have different tickets um, available. We have even a free ticket for people to, to come and check it out. Uh, that it's a free lunch, free breakfast, and all of the all the good training. So, uh, but if you want if you want to get some of the prizes, you know you gotta pay a little bit of money. We're giving away a, a Green Mountain Grill smoker, uh, so we're pretty stoked about that. <laughs> 